Hey everyone, I'm Andy. Welcome to this three-part Furniture Fables. Ask any experienced furniture refinisher for the one piece of advice they would give someone new to this craft, and they will pretty much all say the same thing. Start small. Small projects are great. They let you dip your toe in the water, as opposed to diving straight away off the high board into the deep end of the furniture pool. But even if you have significant experience under your belt, small projects can still be great for trying out new paints, products, techniques, and styles. Maybe play with a color palette that's a little outside your comfort zone, which can allow these little gems to pack a really fun design punch. And you never know, you may end up creating the very thing you didn't know you desperately needed. Our first small project is this solid wood coat rack I found listed for $15 on Nextdoor. It was in perfect condition and had no wobbles. It just looked kind of dated, but I thought with some love, it might shine up pretty quickly. I cleaned it with a TSP cleaner and then gave it a good scuff sand. I also sanded the corners a little bit extra. I thought maybe I would want to do some distressing and that it would be nice if that shade of brown stain wasn't what came peeking through. Then I used Fusion Mineral Paint in the color Bayberry and gave it three coats. I sprayed the existing hardware with some Rust-Oleum paint in gold, then added a little bit of gilding wax to its joinery buttons, added a lower row of new hardware I had also sprayed with that same Rust-Oleum paint. And do you remember her kind of meh, non-existent style? Well, here she is now. <laughs> Sweet and simple, and just one afternoon, a little high quality paint in a winning color with the perfect complementary hardware. I had actually originally planned to sell this coat rack as a quick flip, but everyone begged me not to, so now she's a part of the family. Every day we get to come home to this tall drink of water and I am so glad that we do. I have to tell you, I think that this was one of the first projects I ever did using fusion mineral paint. And you can see I didn't prime, I didn't top coat, and it has held up amazingly well. I'm really impressed with it. And things stay up off the floor, for the most part. This charming tiny table belongs to my sister Megan. We had planned to make it over together while our families were visiting this summer. She had bought it a long, long time ago, back when she was young and cool, <clears throat> and had always found its small size and hexagonal shape useful in her front family slash sitting room. The table had definitely been living its best table life, bearing the marks of coffee cups and a large decorative candle holder so we started with a good cleaning and drying, which admittedly proved a tad more challenging in Oregon than in California, and then took the table out to the little pier overlooking her lovely pond. No, I am not jealous. So that I could start to sand. Now, I do need to tell you a particularly dramatic element to this story. My sister's gang of bloodthirsty geese were always lurking about, and I had my hands full attempting to refinish her little table while also watching my back. Here they are trying to lure me in with their picturesque adorability. Look how that little baby just plops down there in the grass. Looks so cute, it hurts. But then see, look, oh, see, they're walking in my direction. And, well, now they're hurrying off away from me. But look, look, see, that one's looking at me. See? But, and then they're, well, now they're, they're hurrying away from me again. But you can see that I just narrowly escaped with my life. Okay, back to the little table. After we finished laughing about how hilarious it would be if I were to fall into the pond, I stopped joking around because, of course, knowing myself, I could easily manage to fall into the pond. So 
I started sanding and that's when I realized this entire table was MDF, not one ounce of solid wood. As I saw how deep that large ring mark was, I worried about being able to smooth it out and discussed with Meg the possibility of doing a wood filler top coat. But at this point, her eyes kind of glazed over and she said, when do we get to the pretty part? So I said, oh, all right, let's just see how the primer does for us. Then I did the spray can paint dance, obviously necessary. Then we gave the table two good coats of Bin Shellac Primer, making sure to follow the directions on the can about the distance, the spray direction, etc., and sanded lightly in between. Then I just couldn't stand it. I used a little bit of wood filler over that ring indentation on the table and then sanded that back after it had dried and did one more spray coat of primer over that. Then we got to the pretty part. This is Buttercream by Dixie Belle. Yum. I applied my first coat as the sun set and thought about how marvelous it was to paint in such a beautiful setting. Practical? No. But inspiring, for sure. And obviously only possible with a small project like this lovely, adorable little table. Meg added another coat of buttercream and even got some on film, which is tough when you don't have a camera stand. <laughs> Go Meg! Then we gave it a quick smoothing sand on its top and then decided to do a little bit of distressing. Well, of course, we first had a ridiculously long conversation about whether or not she wanted distressing. If so, how much? It went something like this. What do you think? I don't know, what do you think? Well, it's your table, what do you think? Well, you're the one with the YouTube channel with the word furniture in the name, what do you think? In the end, we kept the distressing mild, just focusing on the table corners and the little edges and insides of those pretty legs and a little bit on the horizontal band detail. After that, it was finally time to top coat. I stirred up that little Dixie Belle top coat in flat that Meg had purchased, explaining how easy to apply this water-based poly top coat was, and therefore how great for a beginner. And I showed her how to apply it without any fancy brush or sprayer, just with a simple foam brush. Just as I was finishing that first coat, the geese rolled up and stared menacingly. Well, actually, they honked adorably and seemed genuinely interested in the table makeover. I wasn't aware they were part of my target audience. Well, we let that first coat dry under a heat lamp in Meg's garage. And then we measured and trimmed the sweet rice paper Meg had had saved for several years and had just always wanted to do something with. And then using the Dixie Belle top coat as our glue, we added that paper as a decorative band around the table inside those trim pieces. Wow, this was so great to do together. Four hands managing this process and with John videoing, this must be what it feels like to be an HGTV star, I thought, as I top-coated over the paper. After all of that had dried, we brought the little table inside, trying carefully not to disturb the epic game of something or other that was happening in the family room, and we took out the Dixie Belle gilding wax Meg had purchased when she had picked out her paint color. Her idea was to apply it all along those horizontal trim pieces. I explained in a very older sisterly way that it's always great to start with just a little wax. You can always add more. <laughs> but she just laughed and went for it. And her side looked way better than mine. So I gleefully followed suit and even added a little bit to the inside of those legs. Gilding things together is really fun. Meg tells me that she is now happily looking about her home, thinking about all of the many, many things she can add a hint of gold to. Remember our scuffed and ringed dark brown mini table? Well, here she is now. Wow, she looks like a little jewel box. 
bright and happy and gleaming. I couldn't help myself. I had to take her out to the pier one more time for some gorgeous outdoor glamour shots. Which again was so easy because she's so petite. This little table was so fun to do with my sis. Add in pier location painting and a constant threat of goose attack and it was one of the more dramatic and exciting makeovers I've ever done. The brightening up of that little table made such a huge difference in Meg's front sitting room. Instead of absorbing light, it now seems to emanate it out, beaming it into the room. It just goes to show you the power that these smaller accent pieces can have in our home. Ooh, and speaking of small but mighty. Our third project is a true mini and also probably the best one if you are a true beginner. I picked up this vintage-ish cigar slash jewelry trinket box in a local antique shop near Meg's house while we were on vacation for I think about five bucks. It's mostly wood with just its bottom being made of some kind of pressed board. You can see it's pretty scuffed and dirty. I gave it a good spray of simple green and then used hot water and a sponge to scrub it clean. You can see here why we clean. <laughs> Even the small pieces can carry a lot of dirt. Then I set the little box out in the sun to dry and got out my sanding sponge and a 220 grit disc and gave it a good scuff sand. You can see here in the bright daylight the sheen of that original varnish. We don't want that. We want to dull the surface up so that the paint can adhere better. Three of the little feet were loose, so I scraped them clean and then got out my Gorilla Glue and added some to the feet as well as the box, then wiped up the excess and set a book on top while it dried. After about two hours, I flipped it over and put the book on top again and let that set up for the rest of the day. Then I got out some primer. This is Dixie Belle Boss Primer in Clear. I would typically use a white primer, but I had this in a smaller size and so it made it a lot easier to bring it inside for this indoor project. After the primer dried, I got out a new color for me. This is Bohemian Gold by Melange Paints, a deep mustardy gold. And I also took this opportunity to try out this little brush by Fusion. I thought its thinner bristle silhouette would work really well for this project. So let's talk for a second about design decision making because that is a skill that is great to practice when you are working with a mini piece like this wooden box. The question really isn't what can I do, it's what can't I do? And that can feel overwhelming. The possibilities are basically infinite. I thought for a while about what I wanted to do should I maybe make it for somebody in mind, say a friend with an upcoming birthday? By the way, designing something for a person you know is great design decision-making practice. Or I could make it for my nightstand to put jewelry in at the end of the day. But in the end, I thought this autumnal inspired design would be fun, as it seems everyone is ready for some cooler weather. <laughs> For the second coat, I got out my cake stand and set the box on top. Having one of these is great for a little project like this. I used a smaller artist brush to cut that paint in around those tiny original hinges and continued on with my second coat. It's really common with yellows to need extra coats, and I believe I ended up needing three to cover the box completely. Then I got out the colors Silky Blue 
and Restoration Bronze, both again by Melange Paints, and a fall-inspired stencil. And then using the bottom of the piece, I experimented with the colors and the shapes to see what I liked. Whenever stenciling, less paint is usually better, so I blotted my brush onto my paper plate. Pretty. I liked both, but was really feeling those wheat stalks in that beautiful, quiet, darker blue. So I started applying them to the top. I was completely not paying attention to what I was doing at first and applied the first larger wheat stalk with way too much paint. And so I wiped it back. Yes, you can do that if you get to it quick enough. And I just redid it. Then I added a few more after I decided I liked the look of the two wheat stalks kind of crisscrossing at the base. And then I realized my two on the right side were too far over. Uh, so I erased them, feeling very irritated with myself because usually my eyeballing trick is much better than that. And I added some more bohemian gold to cover the remnants of that blue. And then while that was drying, I got out some wooden coasters I had recently purchased from Amazon and I played with some more colors. I used Copperhead Orange and Restoration Bronze to paint one side of those coasters. Then I dug through my wallpaper collection and I found this remnant that had all of these beautiful, rich autumnal colors in it. And so I measured it roughly to fit in the bottom of the little box and then applied it. I gave those inside edges of the box a quick sand and then a very light painting, just so that it would look nice and crisp and clean. Now that my fresh spot treatment of Bohemian Gold had dried, I made a couple of tiny reference points with a pencil and then redid my wheat stencils. Ah, much better. I had another little idea I wanted to try. I added just one little set of the wheat petals to the corners. And then I also added a very soft version of that crisscrossed wheat stencil to the inside raw wood of that top. but then I decided I didn't really like those little wheat leaves on the front, just seemed a little too fussy or something. So I erased as much of them as I could with water and then gave the box one more quick refresh of Bohemian Gold. Lastly, I got out my Big Mama's Butta in its wonderful orange grove scent and used it all over the piece to seal in that paint. I let it 
sink in for about 20 minutes and then I wiped up any excess with a lint-free rag. So do you remember our forgotten and scruffy seaside shop $5 find? Well, here she, oh, uh oh, looks like we're really leaning into the fall theme here. And here her tiny majesty is now. <laughs> A mini home run! With coordinating coasters, this little treasure will look splendid doing its job on the family coffee table with a shape and dimensions very similar to a full-size furniture piece. What great practice she provided for me, all while I sat at the comfort of my dining table. And what else might someone use such a little box for? How about to hold picks, capos, and a nail file? or tiny D&D characters, or your priceless collection of jewels. I mean, endless possibilities. A great project for anyone interested in upcycling, or for folks wanting some low stress practice before taking the plunge and swimming with the big girls. A mini box makeover is a perfect choice. So if I were just starting out, what valuable experience would these small scale projects give to me? Cleaning, prep sanding, learning the power of a quality paint line, how to install new hardware, saving money by painting existing hardware, being careful with MDF, priming with a spray can, distressing, decoupage, applying top coat, tasteful application of gilding wax, a basic repair with glue, trying new colors, painting around hinges, wallpapering, stenciling, correcting a mistake, creating accent pieces, sealing with wax, and of course, a little staging and photography. And what did I gain from doing these three projects? Well, all of that, of course, because Technique, skill, and experience building never ends, but also these. That painting in a beautiful, natural setting can lift your heart and inspire your soul. Whenever possible, add more hooks. That furniture doesn't have to be expensive to be a treasured piece in your home that four hands are way better than two, that geese are not my enemy, <laughs> and that it really is the little things that matter the most. What was old is new again. If you have been thinking of trying your hand at this rapidly emerging niche of furniture refinishing and you want to start with something big, I say go for it. But if you've been hesitating, I say start with something small where you can take your time, make your choices, change your mind, all on a manageable small scale. Just remember these words by Mr. Vincent Van Gogh. Great things are done by a series of small things brought together. I hope you enjoyed our three mini fables, but make sure you join me next time where we visit the other end of the spectrum. <sighs> Thank you so much for joining me, my friends. I'll see you next time for more Furniture Fables. <gasps>